And this could be the point of no return in this stage where we let go. Hi, I'm Lisa Messenger. I'm here with Australian pro surfer and six times world champ <laughs> Steph Gilmore and professional beach bum, I believe. <laughs> well, our job, you know, <laughs> traveling the world and surfing, it's a bit, um, it's a bit of a dream, so. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about the dream, shall we? Look at this, and I'm sitting here in kind of a fantastic Roxy. Do you feel like Power Rangers? I feel like Power Super Rangers. Woman. It'll be interesting <laughs> when we get out there. It could be a whole different story. You'll be fine. <laughs> so tell me, um, so many of our readers love you, and when you're in the magazine, we got such amazing feedback. So you are one of those people who is combining an awesome passion with a job. So how does that look? You know, I think um, for me, I've just, I've always loved surfing. I fell in love with it when I was 10 years old. It was the first thing that I can remember that completely consumed me and everything that I wanted to do. Um, and I just feel like that's when you succeed, when you're so like in love with something and when you, you just, you find a way to make it work. You find a way to, to win, to, for it to be like your everyday. So I think I was just lucky that that's what I fell into. and. And surfing is such a, a dream sport and um, lifestyle, and now I get to call it my job. But um, yeah, I think I just, I don't know, it, it's just it's felt no, so natural for me to compete and, and travel the world and surf, and, and I just loved it so much, and I still do. And I think that's why I you know, was able to have so much success in my career. Um, I think that goes for anyone, really. It's just like, Oh, yeah, it's, I love fun, that. You know? That is so what we're all about, like passion and doing something that you love and you're getting up every day and jumping into it and you absolutely exemplify that. So a question on that, because what's really interesting, for me, for example, with a magazine now, like I used to consume so much media and read so many books and now it's kind of my job. So for you, as surfing is your love and also your job, what do you do for downtime? Or is that your downtime as well? Well, funnily enough, surfing is so, so many different things rolled into one. You know, it's it's my career, it's my passion, it's my hobby, it's my escape. Um, and I'm lucky that I get to combine all of those things and, and I still find, you know, so much joy each time that I do it. And, and because it's forever changing, every single day you paddle out in the ocean, it's different. So I don't ever have that repetitive feeling, you know, it's like there's a new experience, I'll learn something new, I'll fall off more times, I'll, you know, get frustrated. <laughs> um, you know, there's so many different things that come together in, in my life as a surfer. Um, so I'm pretty lucky that that's the way it's kind of <laughs> turned out like that. But Look at you, yeah, you're like I a little know. ray of sunshine. <laughs> it's just all happiness, happiness, joy, joy. I love oh, no, that. But no, it's a lot of hard work too, though. You know, and I think when I look back at my career and I think, wow, I've had so much success, but I, I don't, I mean, it all happened so quickly. And I really believe that because I just always had a positive take on everything and even when I had my losses and everyone goes through different things in their life, you go through the downs and the ups and you have the struggles and and you kind of, I don't know, I've always, always had an opinion that it's like, it's all a part of the journey and you just have to, you know, the sweet's never a sweet without the sour. And, Absolutely. And just, you know, put your seatbelt on for the ride and <laughs> be ready for anything, be ready to adapt and change. and. So how have you evolved through all these years? Like, that's amazing and I totally agree. Like, sometimes the toughest times, and I've had plenty of them, are the most extraordinary catalysts for change if we let them, if we're courageous enough to let them evolve. So how have you kind of evolved over your career as a person? Like, what have been your biggest learnings? Um, yeah, I think for myself, I mean, Evolving as an athlete and a woman, um, yeah. a young woman into a woman. I mean, from a tomboy into a young woman. You know, there was so many things that I have learnt in my career that, um, and sort of doing it under the spotlight too has sort of been scary. But at the same time, I've just been like, well, this is me. This is who I yeah. am, and and I I've, I've always tried my hardest to be as genuine as I can be and I feel like that resonates with people yeah. um, and fans and, and people that you know watching from the outside they see someone who's just genuinely happy and they love what they do and and so for me yeah I just I feel like I've evolved personally more so than anything just into someone who I appreciate traveling I, I love my job I love um, inspiring other people to go out there and and fall in love with something and chase after it um, 
put yourself in a situation where you feel challenged and, and you know, intimidated and, and try and grow out of it. And like you said, the thing, every time you lose something, every time you lose a heat for me or a contest, lose a world title, it's like you learn so much more from that experience. Yeah. And you take that in, onto your next journey. And, and I think also, like, something that I really found the most powerful was detaching from like detaching from my wins and detaching from my losses and sort of like you know they're just material things really it's just a trophy Ooh. what can I do to keep learning and, and growing and there's never a point where you really know everything it's like okay always having that um, you know that taste for like okay what, what else can I give me the information what can I learn just yeah and I think that's really important and that's one thing that I feel like has helped me to stay curious about the world and curious about just being a human being and what can we get out of this life? Wow. Okay, that just gave me shivers. I love everything that you stand for and you're just such an inspirational, extraordinary role model and every single word and sentence that you just said I think not only resonates and inspires me but I think our community will love it. So thank you so much, Steph. You're As you, though, everything you do. Like, and No, but it's exactly like everything that you've done with your magazine and obviously finding, chasing after something that you, like you said, you love reading books, you love learning about stuff and then to be able to find a hole in the market and, and think, okay, let's do something here. I want to know, you know, obviously everyone knows about these brands but they don't know how they were started. Who are the people behind it? Um, how did they get to this point? And it's all, you know, it, it's stories too. At the end of the day, we're all here to have a cool story and, and tell that story. And, yeah. and for you to give these people that platform is really special. And, and yeah, I love the Collective Mag. I think it's it's one of the best out there. And, and I always oh, always you. make sure I try and get my hands on it when I can. So. Thank you. And actually, I'm going to keep going for one sec because um, that to me has been the most important thing. It's like when I started, it's about exactly what you just said. We see these extraordinary brands and they're so unattainable or unrelatable but when you see the story behind the story it starts to make sense and you're like wow that's what Steph went through yeah. that's how she got there and I think with you being so raw and authentic and unapologetically you it's just beautiful and so everyone relates and exactly yeah so thank you yeah, no my pleasure thank you thanks for going for a surf with me oh, okay <laughs> so now <laughs> Steph and I are gonna um Go for a paddle, I think. I don't, I don't know that we're going to uh, get up, but let's see what happens. I don't want to get barreled. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it here first, people. <laughs> <laughs>